I've got five cards for you that cover some of the most topical players in sports, including I get back to the NBA. And I'll tell you which cards I would buy, sell, or hold. This is The Forecast. of the forecast. I missed you all the last couple weeks. And today I get right back in the swing of things with five cards for you. Some of the most topical stories, topical players in sports. Some of the cards that we're hot on or maybe not so hot on. Stay tuned. And of course, Jeff will tell you whether to buy, sell, or hold. So I'm happy to be back here hanging out with you. And I want to remind you guys, of course, that this episode of Sports Card Investor is brought to you by our friends at eBay. eBay is here for the card collectors with a trick for every trade, like advanced tools for price checking with price guide beta within the eBay app and up to 50% faster listing with image scan. Learn how collecting just got smarter at ebay.com forward slash trading hub. All right, guys, so let's kick things off. I want to start in football because, hey, it is NFL season, and one of the most topical players in the sports right now is the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens because there's been a lot of controversy leading up to this season surrounding Lamar Jackson. Have defenses figured out Lamar? Now, I think that's a bunch of bullpucky because Lamar still had a good 2020. He just didn't have an MVP 2020. And we're so used to these guys apparently being MVPs every year. Like, I don't know what we're doing there to a Lamar Jackson who's in his mid-20s still, who's a very young player. Nevertheless, apparently we expect Lamar to be MVP every season. If he goes from amazing to like still really damn good, then we all kind of freak out and decide that defenses have figured him out. Nevertheless, that's been the concern with Lamar Jackson. And that concern hasn't fully gone away this season in fairness. He hasn't played amazing, like not MVP caliber, but so far 761 yards, three touchdowns. He's also, of course, though, had three interceptions. So we're kind of waiting to see how this season plans out. Back in 2020, 33 total touchdowns, nine interceptions, but that was considered a very down season for Lamar Jackson. Let's take a look at his 2018 Donruss Base PSA 10. Pretty high pop on this card, almost 4,000 of these. This card is down 20% over the last 30 days. So it's looking like here the hobby is getting a little skittish about the fact that he's not knocking everyone's socks off, I guess, in 2021. Again, albeit still looks decent here this season. His 2018 Optic Base PSA 10, lower pop, also much lower movement on this card. This card's only down about 4% over the last month, which is basically steady. So this card isn't really down. So what do we do here with Lamar, Jeff? Do you agree with me? A young player, an extremely talented player, and the expectation there that he's going to be 2019 Lamar Jackson every year, in my opinion, is just an overhyped expectation. But what do you say? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? I absolutely love watching Lamar Jackson play. It is must-see TV, in my opinion. The guy is electric on the football field. His football card prices, though, have not been so electric. Since his MVP year, his cards have crashed. They have gone down tremendously. And I will admit, I bought Lamar Jackson's cards going into last season. I bought some because I expected big things from the Ravens. And the Ravens, I guess, were somewhat disappointing. People definitely thought Lamar Jackson's performance was disappointing, even though he still put up pretty good numbers, but they were not like his MVP campaign numbers the year before. I still have a lot of Lamar Jackson cards. I believe the Ravens are a good team. They're a team that's always going to be in playoff consideration. Maybe we'll have the breakthrough potential of getting to the Super Bowl one year. If you're investing in young quarterbacks, who are guys who are always going to be in the spotlight for many years to come. Lamar Jackson's got to be towards the top of that list. So at this point, I still like Lamar Jackson as a buy. So from a young quarterback that people have question marks about to another one that everyone's in on this season because he is having a fantastic 2021 so far. And that is the quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. That looks like a pretty darn good team so far as well. 
Kyler Murray, an early favorite for MVP, you could even say. I mean, he obviously needs some playoff success under his belt, but he's passed for over a thousand yards, seven touchdowns, four interceptions so far this season already, and his team is undefeated. Extremely popular player in the hobby, though. Fairly high pop as well on some key rookies from his 2019 collection. So let's take a look here at 2019 Don Russ Base PSA 10. Now this one, still almost, I mean, over 3,700 of these. And this card over the last month is up almost 50% in value. So huge increase in value here for Kyler Murray's cards. Let's take a look at his 2019 Prism Base PSA 10. Pretty high pop still on this one, up 23% over that same period of time over the last 30 days. So Kyler Murray and his team off to a very hot start here in 2021 and the value of his cards also off to a very hot start here for the 2021 NFL season. So Jeff, what do we do with Kyler Murray? Do we buy, do we sell or do we hold? Kyler Murray is another quarterback who I invested in pretty significantly his rookie year and I'm glad I did. He is really proving on the field this year how good of a player he is. He is he is electric just like Lamar. He might even be more electric in some ways. He's fascinating to watch. He is must-see TV as well. And I really like Kyler Murray. Now, unlike Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray's cards have been ticking up recently, but they're still way below where their highs were previously. I still think there's a buy window right now for Kyler Murray, but it's gonna close soon because buying cards early in the NFL season is risky. We typically see a dip in card prices as we get later into the season, especially for players who are not favorites to make a Super Bowl run. The Cardinals have looked good so far, but I wouldn't exactly say I trust them to make a Super Bowl run. So for that reason, if you're gonna buy Kyler, buy him right now, don't wait too much longer. There could be a dip the second half of the season if the Cardinals start to, to stutter. Otherwise, you could just wait till the offseason to maybe pick up some Kyler cards. So let's switch gears for a second for another guy maybe contending for an MVP, but in a very different sport. Fernando Tatis Jr., the San Diego Padres shortstop. He's one of the brightest stars in Major League Baseball. He is in the running for NL MVP with guys also like Juan Soto and Bryce Harper. He's slashing 284, 370, 617 in 2021, 41 homers, 95 ribbies. His team eliminated already from the playoffs. So we're not going to see a postseason bump here for Fernando Tatis Jr. in terms of his card value. His key rookies have extremely high pop counts, but they're highly liquid. So let's take a look at his 2019 tops base PSA 10. Over 15,000 of these in circulation. That card's down about 17% over the last 30 days. So Tatis Jr. playing lights out in the running for NL MVP card value is actually declining here over the last month. If I'm looking at his 2019 Topps Chrome Base PSA 10, much of the same story over the last 30 days, and there's almost 10,000 of these in terms of pop as well, that card's down about 19% in value. So Jeff, we know he's not going to get a value bump here in the postseason as we head into October. So what do we do here? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? Baseball has such an exciting core of young up and coming superstars right now, whether you're talking about Soto or Vlad Guerrero Jr. or Acuna or Fernando Tatis Jr. Tatis is absolutely part of that core. He's one of those guys who I find very interesting, very compelling off the field. His look is different. His style is different. He's got a swagger that you don't see much of in Major League Baseball. I think he's very marketable for the long run I love Tatis's cards because he also has the play on the field to back it up. That said, now is not the time to buy, nor is now the time to sell. Now would just simply be the time to hold Tatis cards. Obviously, the Padres out of the playoff contentions this year, they don't have the same magic as they had last year. What you would likely want to do 
is wait until the off season, give it a few months. You know, as we're getting into like November, December, you're gonna probably see a further dip into Tisa's card prices. That I think would be a good time to buy before baseball cards start being paid attention to again, which occurs typically in January or February. So hold on to Tisa at the moment. I think there's a buy opportunity coming up. So we're doing young players on today's show. Let's continue with the theme to a guy who just signed a five-year, $207 million contract in his sport. And that is, of course, Michael Porter Jr. of the Denver Nuggets. Now, he has been a key player off the bench for the Nuggets since 2018. We're not talking MVP caliber player, but we're talking about a solid player and a big contributor to that team. He played just 61 games in 2020, but he averaged 19 points per game while shooting 45% from three. Lethal, versatile score injuries, though. A concern here for Michael Porter Jr. and have limited him in the past. The Nuggets are deep. They have that depth. And obviously, they ponied up and they paid the man. So is there enough space here for the Nuggets in order for Michael Porter Jr. to shine, even if he ends up battling some injuries? Let's take a look at his 2018 Prism Base PSA 10. Over 5,000 of these. Can his cards keep rising? Because boy, have they risen so far. Just over the last 30 days, and remember, keep in mind, he just signed that huge contract. So he's also been in the news of late. Michael Porter Jr.'s card is up 27% in value. If we're taking a look here at that 2018 Optic Base PSA 10, lower pop on this one, still huge increase in value, up 25% over the last month alone. So Jeff, what do we do here with Michael Porter Jr.? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? I'm still not entirely sure what to make of Michael Porter Jr. I mean, this guy was the number one recruit coming out of high school, yet he played almost no college ball because of injury. And then he went to the Nuggets and he's played limited ball because of injury. Now we got to see more of him this last season. He performed well, he showed that promise, but people were so high on this guy. If you rewind the clock four or five years ago, and is he now starting to live up to that potential? He's showing signs that he can, but he's obviously, he hasn't, he hasn't met that potential yet. I was a little surprised that the Nuggets gave him such a big contract, but you know, they obviously believe in his future. So that gives me confidence. The Nuggets think this guy is gonna be an absolute superstar in the league, a max player. They're investing in him accordingly. And so that gives me some confidence. And I do think the Nuggets are a very good team. Obviously they got hurt this last year with injuries. Jamal Murray being out was a killer. Uh, but this year, hopefully they'll be back to full strength again as the year goes on. And hopefully we'll see the Nuggets show some real potential, some real promise in the playoffs like they did in the bubble. So I think Michael Porter Jr. is a reasonable buy right now. It's just somewhat of a speculative buy because we still need to see more out of this guy. So let's stay in the NBA to another young star. This guy, I think more of a star in the NBA in John Morant, a breakout performance in the 2020 playoffs for the Memphis Grizzlies point guard. One of the top young stars, I think, in the entire league. He's got an extremely high pop count on his card. So overall, people have been excited about him in the hobby. He played just 63 games in 2020, averaged over 19 points per game, an explosive player, but is he good enough to make the Grizzlies good enough to win? And how does that affect his card value? You know, not on the best team ever. And obviously that can matter. So let's take a look here at his 2019 Prism Base PSA 10. High pop over the last 30 days, not much movement here for John Morant. Down about 1%, which means pretty steady over the last 30 days. If we're looking at his 2019 Optic Base PSA 10, same thing. This one's got a lower pop. We're still talking over 7,000 of these in circulation and down 1%. So basically zero movement essentially over the last month alone. So what do we do here, Jeff? I'm really high personally on John Morant, but what do we do here for a guy who has seen a lot of population in the hobby and a lot of movement in the past and is now holding steady? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? John Morant is an exciting young player. I love watching this guy. I actually fell in love with this guy watching him in, in college and watching him in the NCAA tournament. 
a few years ago. He basically took his Murray State team and absolutely put them on his back. It was extremely impressive. It's been fun seeing what he's been able to do in the NBA as well. He obviously still needs to continue to improve his game and get better and better, but he's got the talent to do it. I have high expectations for Ja Morant's future in the league. He is with Memphis. And that's a tough climb. There's a lot of good teams in the West and Memphis does have a talented young nucleus, but will they ever really break through? Will that hold them back a bit? Possibly so. That said, I think for a long-term play, Jean Morant is still a good one. You do have to be a little careful though about population counts of 2019 basketball. Those cards are much more common than players from the years prior. So if I'm gonna place a bet on a player who's kind of in Jean Morant's category, I might go back and look for a guy in 2018 or 2017 where I know that the population of his cards are going to be a lot less. That said, I still think it's worth a flyer on Ja Morant. You could also consider buying some sealed wax from 2019 basketball. You guys know I'm high on sealed wax. That's a way to benefit from whatever Ja could do this season, whatever Zion can do this season, and any of those other 2019 rookies. I think I'd buy some 2019 sealed wax and hold on to that. So there you have it, five of the brightest young players across sports. Continue to let us know who you want to hear about on The Forecast. Drop it right below here on the YouTube channel in the comments. Let us know. You can hit me up on social media if you'd like Amber W790 on Instagram and on Twitter. You can listen to me on ESPN Radio. This week I'm on Sunday morning, 7 to 10 a.m., alongside Peter Burns on Best Week Ever. And as always, hit the bell icon on this channel for Sports Card Investor. If you haven't done so already, that's how you subscribe. And it is free and it is easy. And then you won't miss any of our awesome content here from our Sports Card Investor team. And as always, guys, I'll see you next week. Hey, happy news.